Have you ever written a Hello World program? It probably looks like this, but it only works because of all the abstractions your operating system and your programming language provides, right? Have you ever wondered how can you run this Hello World program without your programming language, without your operating system on bare bones, on bare metal? How does that work? Well, today we are going to be exploring that. So when you start your computer, what does your CPU exactly do, right? What does your computer do? How does it like load the operating system? How, what's the process, right? So I'm mostly covering for the x86 architecture, by the way, before I move forward. Now, so the way it works is the CPU starts a program called BIOS or BIOS. I don't know how to say that. It stands for basic input output software. And as you can tell, it is a basic software for input and output and some other things. So it starts that does it also does some health checks and stuff. And then it has to start the it has to hand over the uh, control to the operating system, right? So how does it know where the operating system lies? Because if it were to hand over to the wrong drive and we execute those random garbage values, we may end up formatting all our hard drives, right? Because they, they may be garbage values, but who knows what instruction they might mean. So what to do, what to do? So the way that happens is we look for the boot sector. So in a hard drive, so hard drive is like a area of bytes essentially right we're gonna visualize it to be now at, at the first 512 bytes is what we are gonna want to be the boot sector and it is a valid boot sector if the last two bytes hold the magic number so this is the hex notation aa55 so if the last two bytes in the first 512 bytes of one of the uh, hard drives have that value right have this magic number then it's a valid boot sector and the bias can load that so what we do is we write the boot loader here right and then so what it does it may be like does some bookkeeping and some like some stuff that it needs to do maybe move on from 16 bit to 32 bit so this bias and this starts with 16 bit even in your 64-bit, it starts with 16-bit. Why? For backwards compatibility. So it might want to move on to 32-bit or 64-bit. That would be the long mode. So 64-bit, right? Anyhow, it does some stuff and then it loads up the kernel because in 512 bytes, you cannot have an operating system. So it jumps to some other instruction that is at some other memory, right? Memory address and that is our kernel. So it loads the kernel and then the operating system takes over and we boot up with that whatever thing you have. Okay, so that's what happens. So that means if you want to run a program without any operating system, without any uh, language, right? Run language runtime. What we need to do is write a bootloader. So we're going to write a bootloader and then we're going to compile it to binary and then we're going to use a emulator to run that or we can you know burn it into an ISO and then uh, and then you can put it into a real computer or you can use a VM but we're gonna use an emulator because that's easy so I'm gonna be using QMU so you can see how you can download it for your device it's pretty simple and since we're gonna be programming in assembly I'm gonna be using NASM so this is netwide assembler now you can download some other tool but make sure you know that uh, a syntax okay so i'm gonna be using the netwide syntax i i think it's called intel syntax whatever whatever okay so let's create our hello assembly okay and now so first of all let's write a simple program that does nothing okay that does nothing so that would be jump dollar so what this would do it's a while true loop okay so this is an assembly program, it's valid, but we cannot really, we cannot really 
load it as a bootloader because it is not a valid boot sector. We need 510 bytes after this. I mean, some bytes till 510th byte, right? And then we want the magic number. So that would be 55AA, I mean AA55. So to do this, we have a simple declare word uh, instruction. So this will put this word 0xA55 in the binary, okay? And, uh, but to pad this, what we can do is we can copy paste this line. So what this does is till 510th byte, we are declaring a byte called zero, just padding it nothing, okay? So yeah, and this way we will get a valid boot sector. So let's try to compile this, so NASM. And now if you open this file, as you can see, we have the first instruction jump dollar, and then we have nothing. And then in the 512th byte, we have the magic number AA55. Now, if you're wondering why is it the opposite, it's because it is little endian. So it is little endian has like the least significant bit first and then the most significant. And then there's another way to write in binary that is big endian most significant to least significant. So we are using little Indian now. So we have this and now let's uh, provide our Q emulator with the binary. So like, again, I said, you can run it on a VM as well or, a, or like real hardware, but we're going to use an emulator because that's easy. So let's run that and we see something, but we don't see really anything. It's just all the booting from this, right? It's all what the bias does. So what we want to do is we want to print something. To print something, you need to print, you need to interact with the device, right? The hard, the monitor. So, and if you remember, we are in 16 bit where we have bias and bias is basic input output software. So it provides some functionality to input output stuff. So the way you tell bias to output something is that you specify uh so what you're gonna do is you specify to the bias that you want a teletype instruct you want to do a teletype instruction where you put something okay so that console right where you type stuff so that's the teletype device so you so you specify that by moving a some value right which the hardware developers or whoever decided. So that is 0x0e. And then you tell it what is the what is the character you want to print. So let's say h, right? And then you do an interrupt, interrupt number 10. So on interrupt number 10, when we, uh, the bias will be invoked and then bias will see the value of ax register. So if you know ax is a 16 bit resistor, the first eight bits are, uh, the AH and then the lower A, 8 bits are AL. So it will check that register and it will see that, okay, we want to output on, into teletype device and we want to output H, okay? So it will see that and then it will output because it, it is biased, it makes life easy. So let's run, I mean compile and now run and we should see nothing. Why? Can you spot the difference? Lower Explorer? Of course, we never, came out of the true while loop, right? While true. So yeah, with that, let's run it. And okay, I forgot to compile. Let's compile and run. And we have H printed. So we are pretty close. Now all we have to do is just copy this. One, two, three, four, five. And yeah, so the next letter is E, the next is uh, L, the next is L, then O, and then add an ex let's add an ex exclamation because uh, we coded in assembly, right? So let's compile and run. And we have hello world printed. Would you look at that? So we have wrote a hello world program without the operating system without your language runtime obviously without operating system we don't have the language runtime but we have done it on bare metal so it is but we we heavily used uh 
our bias but when you move from 16 bit to 32 bit then you don't even have that and then it's even more interesting the way it works is that uh, you you write this hello the um, hello in some spe specific memory layout and then because this teletype is a memory map device it will like print that so uh, I just mentioned that if you were interested in how that does if you didn't understand that's fine but there we go we have a hello world program on bare metal done hope you like this video it was like a pretty random video I know uh, but uh, and probably not very useful but hopefully interesting if you like leave a like subscribe and I'll see you next time